with each year, as I get another year older, as I get a little bit more gray hair, go back and watch my early videos. There was none of this, but now it just keeps coming more and more or keep getting less and less on top. But with each passing year, I keep thinking, what am I going to do with this? This is a lot of records. Now, my, my first collection, I really was in a quandary because there was so much when it's over 12,000. This is a case where it's only 3,000. But I look at this. What am I doing with it? And when should I get rid of it? Yeah, it, is, it, is it going to be a hardship for others to deal with? And this is really bothers me. And, and I've been thinking about it. You know, the older you get, the more you think about it. At least I do. Uh, some of the others, most of the people that watch my channel, similar age, getting some gray hair, a little bit younger. But I, what do you do? Yeah, most people you talk to, they have a family member. Somebody in their family that really likes music, that's really interested. They can't wait to get their hands on this. I know if I had, a, if my parents had a big collection or an uncle or an aunt, I, I would just be, oh, yeah, man, I'll take it. I'll take it. Just give it to me. And, and, and it would be, I would love, I would love to get this. But I don't have that. Uh, my wife has zero interest in it, no idea anything about it, and doesn't want to know. Both my boys, they're not into music. You know, they might see it's a valuable, well, okay, what can I get for that? But they're not, it's, they don't want it. I mean, they don't want this kind of collection. They don't want to dedicate this much room in their house to records. And I get that. I mean, most people don't. This is our own personal disease, okay? This is our own personal issues that we're willing to because this makes us happy. But for most, they don't find that same type of happiness. I have a grandson and granddaughter. Maybe they're going to want it. You know, by the time they're 20, I want to be 85. Will I even be around? Will they even be interested in records? Will records even be around in 20 years? I'm sure they will be. But will anybody be caring? I don't know. And, you know, the, the other thing with a family member, if you give it to a family member, how do you educate them? How, how do you help them to understand what's valuable, what's not valuable, especially if they're going to start to sell it? So they don't get just screwed over. Because it's very easy to do. I've seen it happen. You know, uh, you know it, it just... If someone can go in and just lowball a price and take it all. You go, man, look at me. Look what I got. And and I and you I don't want that to happen. But you know, the other part is you let them deal with this. Is that right? Is that right to let if I pass before my wife, isn't this a happy video? If I drop dead before my wife, is it right to let her deal with this? Probably not. And so, you know, the first part of giving to a family member right now, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. So you got to start going at the second part, selling it off. When do you start selling it off? When should I start thinning it? Beginning to look at there and try to get stuff. Now, I just retired, okay? Well, not really retired, I guess. I'm working for my son now. But I have a lot more time on my hand, which you can tell by videos, okay? So, I'm probably not ready to start thinning it yet. But it's something to look at. You know, I, I can't expand beyond this room, and I will purge. And I have done some purging, and I will do some more purging. But, you know, to take some of my most expensive, valuable records, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, you know, you know, certain things are just going to be hard. You know, you think of here, you know, this, you know, original Zamrock album. And there's quite a few of these in this collection. Who's going to want it? How do you get rid of it? When do you thin it? Do I keep on to this? And you know what? It, it doesn't it doesn't play the best because it's. Came, I mean, it's just been abused through life, which a lot of Zamrock records are. Is this worth hanging on to? It makes me feel very, very happy. 
but if I could get the right price, should this go earlier versus something that I can play more and enjoy more? But, you know, what is the right time? You know, right now the market's hot. It's a great time to sell records. If you want to get rid of your collection, now's the time. And there are, I know, uh, you know, my my, my my record store back in, in Michigan, I've seen some other videos, Billy Hurst just put one, about a lot of newer stuff's being now dumped into the bins. And it gets a little harder. You know, the kids are starting to dump their collections and move it on to the next thing, and it happens. It's just that us old folks, we don't want that music. So the record store's going, I don't know what to do with it. Well, you know, a same with this. This is hard for a lot of record stores to deal with, a Zamrock album. Because there's not a lot of Zamrock people out there, and when they see a price on what it goes for, there really is not too many. So it becomes a quandary. You know, I paid a lot for it. It's worth even more. But who wants it? And, uh, you know, market's hot right now. Maybe I can sell it 10 years. It just may be very, very difficult. But, you know... The, the other part is, if you start to sell early, I'm young enough to enjoy the benefits of it. I'm young enough to be able to take this and travel and go around the world, go wherever, and enjoy some of my life. You know, to have my wife Patty come with me. Um, of course, I might go to some destination she's not interested or probably go to record stores anyway. But it's something, you know, to do. If I were to start thinning it now and get money to sell something like this and take that and use it for something else, that's a possibility. But that makes me happy when I look at it. It's an issue. You know, there's other ways, you know, when you think about, okay, so selling it, I'll probably have to do something myself because right now there's no one in my family that's going to take this. So there's Discogs. Okay, you can use Discogs. Look at all the people that use Discogs. I mean, that's 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 kind of our Bible, is isn't it? I will be a new seller. When you go on to Discogs and you go in there and you say, well, and here, this 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 is an original bitch's brew. Okay, uh, Mofi. I'm a brand new seller. I have maybe I've sold to three people. And I'm going to try to sell this. I'm going to sell for a good price because I just want to move some stuff out. Are you going to be hesitant to buy anything from me? You're going to look at that and go, hmm, that's a good price. But boy, there is this guy even legit? Serious. I, I, I look at that. I'm very nervous. When I see really good prices and they have almost no sales, they're probably trying to build something up. But you've also heard that. You know what? People get screwed by that too. Is it legit or not? For me to go on the Discogs, that's going to be the issue. I can sell on Discogs, but will people think I'm legit? Can I get something for it? I don't know. There's eBay. A lot of people buy eBay, right? I'm not a big eBay person. Uh, I have bought some stuff on eBay. It's just a rabbit hole I've stayed out of. But some of you have great luck with eBay. You do well with eBay. You know, maybe again... Maybe something like this. Maybe I reach a bigger audience. I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to say. You know, you have something like here. Your suicide. You know, uh, you know, what's it worth? This is the reissue. That's original vinyl that I kept after after the flood. Is this worth anything? You know, you go on to some of these discog sites. Those are charge like fifty bucks for the plain white cover, but the original vinyl fifty dollars. What really? Really? I, I guess the vinyl is the most important part, but do I get anything decent for this? If if I have, I mean, there, there's another record in here. If I sell it this way, can I still get a big price for it? Would I get more on eBay versus Discogs on it? I, I, I don't know. Um, there's record shows. That might be an option for me. Take my stuff to record shows and, and, and see what I could do in record shows. Uh, uh, and, and again, you just kind of look at, you know, stuff to sell. If I went to a record show, you know, it's it's an original. Milo goes to college. That might be get a lot of people excited. The thing is, it's not cheap, right? A lot of people at record stores, you know, at record shows, they might like something like this. This is a reissue. 
at you. Actually, it's not. It, it is an original, but it's affordable of um, Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, there, you know, something like, you know, $30, something like that might go, you know, or, you know, Tome Poets, or just some of the common stuff. But, you know, record shows is a way to do it. It's just you got to lug it in, you got to lug it out, you know, just the way it is. Something like this, if you're at the right record show, it will go. A lot of record shows, uh, this high, especially smaller ones, this high-end stuff doesn't sell, except when you get someone like me coming through. The Denver show, maybe so. I don't know how much a table costs. Can't be cheap, but there I might have a chance for it, especially if it's at a good price. Online auctions, some of you do. I've seen Mazzy's done a lot of online auctions. I think Billy Hurst does online auctions. There's a WhatsApp app, I guess, that can be used. I haven't done that. I just stay away because the last thing I need to do is spend more money. But there's a variety of ways which you can do an online auction. Now, I have a pretty, you know, a nice amount of subs. Though, you know, you know it's 4,000 subs. How many will I actually watch? Well, that'd be 200. Uh, so you know just hey it's the way it is man that's just that's just called youtube um but there there is that option to try to sell on online you know dom seeking a thread sold a lot of stuff through online auctions has good luck with it possibilities there uh then there's bill's garage i come back to jt you know on on his channel he goes over to bill's garage and he's able to do that i can invite people over and you know and just my my friend, my you know who you know recently well not recently now but Bill Young, I would go over to his house when he knew the cancer was taking him when he knew he wasn't going to make it he began to sell his collection and he would ask me to come over he goes I'm going to have these they're going someone's taking them to a record show or whatever for me what do you want in there you know for instance I bought this this is an original Jane's Addiction here uh, and you know uh, Ritual Habitual bought it from him i got a, a very good price it wasn't cheap because he was trying to get money obviously he has cancer he needs the money and i wasn't going to low end him whatever he says what he wants to charge i'm going to pay for it because it's not right he needs the money um but i would go to his house and he would invite me over every few weeks hey I, take a look at here what do you want i got a number of bill young albums in here but that was the way to go. It's something here. It's just, I'm new in Denver. I don't know a lot of people. Tice can come over. Uh, but, you know, you can, it would be a way to sell some. You kind of pull, what do you want? It's just, you're not going to sell everything. Then, you know, there is the record shows. So, you know, those those, those are some options. Uh, you know, the, the, the other big part of this, though. Okay, so I have this. I decide which way to go. How much is it worth? How much is disc? There's Discogs price and there's reality, and those are two different things, isn't it? Very, very different. I mean, you know, I, I have something like Lit Suit. This is autographed. I mean, uh, Danish band, one of my favorites. Um, new album coming out, by the way. I pre ordered it, Lord knows how many more I bought. Uh, but you know. It's autographed to me. My name's on here. This is very valuable to me. Will it be valuable to someone else? How do I value that when I'm trying to sell it? When someone else goes, ah, oh, it has Steve's name on there. Cool. Unless the name's Steve, then it might be cool. <laughs> that heard it. Uh, it does have the autograph of, you know, Uf Lorenzen on there, the lead. So how much is it worth? What is it? Is it worth more? Is it worth less? You know, what is a realistic expectation? We have to have that. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I look at something like this. Okay, this is an original great garage rock. You know, here we got, you know, the night crawlers, that little, the little black egg. Uh, very neat, very cool album I, I bought many years ago out in the country somewhere in a little record store. <laughs> it's just like, what? Are, it's in, you know, some, uh, it's out in nowhere, Ohio, as I found this. But, very neat, but what is the value? What What's a realistic expectation I could expect to get off of this album? Pretty tough. But that's if I'm selling it myself. The other option is the middleman. The middleman's called a record store. And there might be other options dealing with middlemen. I don't know, but basically it's a record store. I could sell my collection to a record store. Most somewhat excited. 
this is a big collection. This makes some kind of go, hmm, what's in it? Now, I know there's great stuff in here. I it, it, it's, it's packed with stuff um, that's really good. But there's crap, too. You know, got that original Misfits back there. I, it goes for big stuff. But then I have, you know, like here. First Boy on the Moon. To me, it's a great band. I love First Boy on the Moon. A record store might look at it and go, I'll never sell that. I mean, maybe nope, 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 nobody knows it. You know, autograph Steve Martin, Edie Burkell. Maybe a record store is going to go, mm, I don't know. You know, worth more to me. But if this becomes, you know, generally they'll come in. I'll give you this much for the collection. That's an easy way for the family to do it. But you can really get screwed over. This is where you need to know the owner. Now, if I was still in Midland, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, Jim there, Jim Gleason, I know would take care of me. You know, when, when Bill Young was um, about, about ready to go, he worked, you know, Jim worked a deal with Bill. And he said, I'll sell these albums. You give me the price. And I'm not going to discount them. And the money went to Bill's wife. How many record stores do that? Uh, it may, may, maybe a bunch too. I, I don't know. But he did that because Bill had all this phenomenal stuff that I continued to buy, all this rare psych. And he would do that. And I would be coming in. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, Jim would work deals and that, but he, not on Bill's stuff because that money went to his wife, Bridget. That's that that would be ideal if I got to really know a record a, a record store here that I could work something like that out on a collection like this. You know, he could take a cut part of it, but proceeds a lot of it would go to my wife. Now, you know, again, Jim didn't have to buy those albums. He would just brought them in to sell for the wife. So he didn't have overhead, but the money went that way. To me, that would be the most ideal way to do it so my wife could benefit. The one happens if I outlive her, then my kids could benefit, right? But I, I, I think that would be. But, you know, do you sell it if I do a record store? Do you sell piecemeal? Do you sell it all at once? What is the best way? Uh, you know, sometimes with piecemeal, people come in and they cherry pick it. Cherry pick it to death. I'll take this, this, and this, and suddenly you're left with, um, you know... Just just a bunch of uh, Gordon Lightfoot, you know, diamond, stuff like that. So just some thoughts. Kind of what, you know, your thoughts on this. What do you think as you're approaching, especially if you're approaching that age where, what do I do with this? That's a big question. And it really does bother me a lot as I think about it. And I, I have yet to get an answer. I have yet to be able to formulate what I need to do. And I hope it doesn't happen when suddenly it's almost, oh my God, you know, the end's near. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just do this. You would like to enjoy your retirement. Maybe my retirement enjoying will just be sitting here and listening to the music. And it, it does bring me pure joy. But maybe it might be selling some of this to go do something else, to see something else. Maybe I should just quit buying records and not be in, in, <laughs> in you know, stop and start saving that money up. That might be an option. But we're record collectors. Oh, that's not easy. And if I know Richie's cut way back, he said. He's retired and he's cut back. And I, God bless him for that, being able to do that. I need to work on it. I guess I'm still working, so maybe when I retire. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching this. I, you know, I'm kind of interested in thoughts of each of you. You know, have you thought about this? What are your, you know, what, 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 what would you do? What would be, you know, your kind of? Here's how I think I would handle something like this because it is, it's a, you know, it, it's a big deal, and something that all of us will eventually have to deal with. So what are we going to do? Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.